Ariel over here at Finest, where today we are making salsa. So I'm making a fairly large batch like I usually do for most things that I make and can like this. And this should last us at least a year, maybe a little bit more. And um, you can do the same thing without making such a massive batch for sure. I'm making two batches this size actually is the plan, but this this one is going to be about 15 pounds of tomatoes going into it. And as a foundation, what I've always really liked, I could of course mix my own, but I really like these Mrs. Wages salsa mix spices. It's just um, a whole bunch of different dehydrated veggies like peppers and uh, garlic and onion and such and various seasonings. I find that just a really good starter. Now the original recipe on the back here just calls for this, some vinegar and some uh, fresh tomatoes. I kind of modify that as you probably know that I usually do with most recipes. Um, and yes, I could be doing this out in the canning kitchen in the under the lean-to, and I will probably be moving out there to actually can this stuff, but um, I'm pretty sensitive to slicing up hot peppers and having it on my skin, so I end up using gloves to do that, and I like having hot running water handy while I'm doing that. So once I've got all this together, it will probably move to the canning kitchen. But at the moment, it's here. So what I'm doing first, is I've got all my tomatoes washed. I did manage to find some. Uh, somebody brought some in to our area from, um, I'm gonna need just a little water just to get these tomatoes just starting to, to cook some juice out just so they don't burn while they're getting started. And what I sometimes do, yep, that's why I was just about to say I don't hold it up where you can see it to do that. <laughs> because of that is take my half of tomatoes and gently just kind of squish them like that to press a little bit of the juice out of the center just to get my moisture in here to to get this all started to cook down. Um, Anyway, somebody hauled some tomatoes into the area from Washington. Usually I managed to get some from Utah, but not this year, unfortunately. So there was apparently a blight in that area and, and everybody lost their tomatoes. But I'm thankful to have these, so I am doing a batch of salsa. Now I'm just slicing the, I have some of two kinds here. I would prefer aromas for canning, which I have some of. Um, I was going with what I could get, basically, um, but most of the ones I've got right now are these big round ones. They're fairly meaty inside, so that won't be too bad. But I'm just um, slicing them in half to get them started to cook. Now, if I wanted to, I could run this salsa through my same strainer that I use for spaghetti sauce and berry juice and applesauce and all that stuff like you guys have seen and it would take out all the, the skins and seeds. But for salsa, I actually prefer it more chunky, and so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cook these till they um, loosen up a little bit, and then if the skins seem too chunky in there, I'm just going to uh, reach into the mix and, and slip the, the skin itself off. I want all the, the cores, unless something looks kind of nasty right there at the core, then I'll take it out. But you know, the seeds, all of that, I'm actually wanting in this mix. So, get the tomatoes starting to cook there. And I do have, you're going to see some of these romas are a little green. Once again, I'm working with the tomatoes I was able to source this year. One day we will have our own greenhouse and hopefully be able to grow our own, but can't do that in this area without a greenhouse. So some of these are fairly ripe. Um, some are a little green. Green is not bad for salsa, so if you're doing something like this and you've had, say, a frost that killed your tomato plants, you're trying to figure out what to do with some green ones, this can be an excellent uh, way to use them up. I was able to get some more red ones, and those are all going to be going into my spaghetti sauce recipe, which is the next thing I'll be making. Um, I've already done a video on how to do that. You can go look it up. Um, when I say my sauce recipe, it's what I make, but it came to me from my mother and I guess to her from her friend Susan Shelley, and um, it is definitely a favorite. It's the only sauce I actually like. 
Um, there's no, no recipe I've ever tasted from a store that I, I enjoyed very much. So I'm going to get these started to soften up a little bit. This is going to be about what I can handle in this stock pot without it running over the edges. And then I'm going to cut up all my uh, other things I'm adding to it here because once again the original recipe just calls for tomatoes a little vinegar and the mix here but I like to add more things so I've got some garlic cloves that I just pulled out of the garden this morning so they're still moist um, two big onions I just pulled out of the garden this morning and I like to add some peppers just to bulk it up and for all the pretty colors so I was able to get some jalapenos that are actually red so that's really pretty then I'm throwing in a couple bell peppers of different colors just for the color and these are serranos a couple of those will add a little bit of heat and um, pretty color as well so that's all going to go in here but in the meantime I'm just going to put the lid on there so that can start to steam that's just on low and I'm going to get this stuff all just diced up to go into the pot and um, that just takes a little bit of time so I'm going to listen to a book while I do that and then you're going to watch me throw it in here if you guys ever want to it's not a big deal if I'm in the house but um, if you ever want to haul audiobooks around with you these little speakers uh, I've got one and I got clay one I've been using this for I don't know six or seven years now or something this thing is awesome you can you can Bluetooth connect it to stuff if you're into that I'm not usually so I I hard wire an audio jack into it, it charges up with a little port anyway they're supposed to be kind of dirt proof water water resistant I don't think you're supposed to throw them in your pool or anything um, but I use this to plug into a little CD player or our local library has these little audio book mp3 things I listen to a lot of them anyway I haul this around outside with me all the time in the garden when I'm weeding when I'm cutting firewood so on and they're fairly inexpensive for the amount of volume that they can put out I don't know how they'd be if you really want to listen to you know high volume music or something I'm usually listening to something like a book so if you ever want something that you can listen to and haul around around with you while you do chores I really like this little speaker if I remember I'll link down to, to it down below but I might forget um, anyway now I'm off to chop all this stuff are these some pretty onions and fresh garlic cloves out of the garden I'm really happy with how that stuff's looking anyway if you wanted to if you have a strainer like the one I've got or something similar you could throw your onions in basically I'd probably call have them or quarter them you could throw your garlic cloves in without even peeling them you could just half the peppers or something like that and then run it all through that strainer then you'd have a very pureed um, salsa since I happen to like the more chunky texture I'm actually taking the time to dice all this stuff but it would um, be more efficient if I uh, liked it just pureed so that's just an option if you've got a strainer like that and depending what you or your family likes as far as texture um, you could save a whole lot of time on this stuff and do this more like I do my sauce recipe and just chuck all this stuff in and let it get sorted out in the, uh, the strainer but what I'm gonna do here with the tomatoes where I only cut them in halves they get so soft here as they cook that um, I'm gonna be able to just kind of mush them into chunks without having to take the time to dice everyone though you could do that as well if you actually wanted to but I'm generally doing large batches of things so I don't like spending more time on any of that stuff than I really need to and once again like I said I'm modifying this you know original recipe to my taste you could add more or less onion or none you could add more or less garlic or none you could add more or less peppers of different colors or kinds I'm going for kind of a mild salsa overall I know some of these are hot but with the whole volume of everything else it ends up being a fairly mild salsa which is what I like I'm kind of wimp about real spicy things and uh, if you like your stuff blazing hot you could add all kinds of hotter peppers if 
that uh, suits your taste. Or if you like it very, very mild, you could uh, leave, you know, the serranos or the jalapenos out or do a lot less and um, end up with a very mild one. That's one of the things that's so awesome about making your own stuff is that you can kind of make it to exactly what you like and not, not be stuck with what somebody else prefers um, when they make it. Okay, so these tomatoes have been simmering here with the lid on for a little bit. You can see how much juice has now cooked out of them, all the watery looking stuff. And this is just a potato masher. And I'm not even sure that I'm these skins are going to bother me. If I wanted to, I could certainly slip skins off and pull them out like that. But um, I think they're going to be just fine in here. Or like I said, if you want to take a lot more time, you could neatly dice all your tomatoes before just plunking them in your pot as holes or halves or whatever. But once these cook just a little bit softer, a couple of those green ones are still a bit firm. Um, I think they're going to be just great and they're going to give me a nice, nice chunky sauce. So I'm going to start adding in my other ingredients here. Like the fresh onions from the garden that we just chopped up. Get those cooking in there. Uh, still dice some other stuff, but I'm going to add my seasoning mix here. And once again, you can certainly make your own seasoning mix. This is just a flavor that my mom used, and I guess it's one I'm used to, and I find it just as easy to use the uh, you know pre-made mix as to come up with all my own spices and mix them together, which certainly you could do. Now, what I'm doing is th approximately three times the batch that this seasoning mix is made for, so I'm dumping three packets in there. And as you can see, there's a lot of different spices, but a lot of chunks of onion and pepper and stuff that are dried in there too. And so we're just gonna stir all that in here and get all these flavors starting to cook together while I chop up the rest of the peppers and garlic. So that's just gonna keep simmering. And now there's enough liquid, I'm gonna leave the lid off because I would actually like extra moisture to evaporate to make it just a little thicker. But I wanted the lid on while it was getting started so enough moisture would develop in there for the tomatoes to actually start cooking down like this and not just burning onto the bottom. So come back and check on that once we got some peppers to throw in. And Micah had a day off work, so he's over there working on the table, crying over the onions for me, which is very helpful, actually. Um, getting the second batch that's just like the one you've just seen me working on this end of the kitchen, ready to go. Okay, so now we got all the peppers in here too. Isn't that beautiful colors? And we're just gonna keep letting, I can't even get in that steam. If you're sensitive like me to hot peppers, you can uh, burn the inside of your lungs and everything inhaling steam. And I know those aren't that hot for some people, but I'm pretty sensitive. So I have to kind of stand back and, and stir that, and not inhale that pepper steam deeply. Okay, so we've now moved down here to the canning kitchen, which is where I wanted to be to uh, cook this down once I got all my peppers and stuff in where I had a handy sink with hot running water to wash it. I've cooked down, um, it, this is two separate batches in the smaller kettle and this big one, and now that they're mostly cooked down, I've, I've dumped them together so that I get a, a fully blended batch here, which wouldn't necessarily matter, but I just like the idea of doing that. And as far as the cooking down, I've just been letting the, the steam evaporate off here. As you can see, this is now pretty nice and thick and chunky, which is the way I like it. Again, this is the advantage of doing things, making your own. You can uh, make it any texture you like. If you want it super smooth and creamy, like I said, run it through a strainer. If you want little chunks. Now I'm gonna add the vinegar now. I didn't do it earlier because I wanted to cook off some more of that water. 
I think it's supposed to be at a half a cup per batch and I'm doing six batches. So I'm not measuring, but you could. I'm gonna call that three cups. I think the recipe called for white vinegar. I use white vinegar as a cleaning agent. I use apple cider vinegar, usually raw. That's not raw, but this isn't gonna be raw anyway by the time I um, cook it. So I do use the cheaper stuff for some of these by the time it's cooked and heated and, and canned. So we're gonna let this simmer here for just a little bit longer till just a little bit more of that water evaporates and makes our salsa just a bit thicker. And then we're going to be putting it in jars and getting it canned. One thing to be aware of if you are using big pots like this, you need some kind of stirring utensil that goes the whole way to the bottom, preferably with a flat edge like that so you can scrape it or you will burn stuff onto the bottom. This one is borderline on being long enough. As you can see, I don't have a lot of handle left there. Um, there's one of these that's a size bigger that just has more inches on the handle, and I need to get myself one. But you also need something that's fairly sturdy, or you, uh, you simply can't stir something this big and thick without <coughs> bending your stirring utensil. Anyway, that's probably not an issue for most of you because most of you probably are not doing batches this big, but if you are, that's something to be aware of. Okay, got this whole batch cooked down to a, a texture that I'm happy with, just like you've seen in other canning videos. I've got, oh, sorry baby, <laughs> sorry I wasn't looking at you. Excuse you, you need to move over a little bit, I need to stand. I've um, got my freshly cleaned jars that I've dipped in boiling water. Again, there's multiple ways you can uh, make sure your jars are hot and clean. If you got a dishwasher and you want to run them through there, like a hot rinse cycle or whatever, um, you can do all, all kinds of things. Um, I just dipped them in hot boiling water. And I am using pints. I, we can eat salsa by the quart, but I have a bunch of pint jars and I have a whole lot of other things that we already open two quarts of at a time. So this also is one of the few things that makes sense to use up some of my pint jars for. So that's why it's going in pints. But often a pint of salsa is enough for us one time for a meal. And I've got over there, I've got my canners already, the water heating in them. Again, the salsa's hot, the jars are hot. I think that's the biggest key to not breaking stuff and getting things to seal is have everything hot. No shocking going from hot to cold kind of temperature changes just and it's easier because it's hot out here again today we've got a heat advisory where the national weather service is advising you avoid the weather and stay indoors and uh turn your ac on um which is lovely the beginning of september uh, we traditionally have snow flurries and often in another week or so we'd have snow on the ground that won't leave till spring. So the fact that it's nearly 100 degrees is kind of insane. That's like at least 50 degrees warmer than average. I think it, the temperatures this week are, weekend are breaking records. Anyway, so that <laughs> the only thing that's good for is it makes it easier to keep everything good and hot uh, for this process. Otherwise, I do not enjoy the heat at all. But there we got our first seven jars and once again like you've seen me do before this is a little more important here than it would be with the berries because with something like salsa it's very easy to slop a little chunk of tomato pulp or something onto the rim so I'm I'm feeling the rims to with this hot water to wash off any particles of of anything that's spilled on there that would interfere with the seal. This water's hot. I don't want to touch it with my bare hands. Um, I'm feeling for any chips or cracks. These lids I've had just in the hot water enough for this next batch so that I can, uh, the rubber's nice and warm and soft on them as well. And then I Gonna put the rings on and once again I just tighten them to what's comfortably tight to me. No great cranking. I hear that if you over crank on those um, it can prevent the, the pressure that needs to release from releasing and you can get buckled lids. 
I've never had that happen, but a lot of people have been having problems with that, especially I think when you get cheaper, thinner lids, which a lot of us did in the last year because there was such a shortage of being able to find lids. But that's that. And in the canner, they're gonna go. Once again, I'm leaving a very similar amount of head space, that's what it's called, from here on up. That's the, the space we need for air to vent and all that. So we're not filling it right up to the rim. It needs that little bit of gap at the top. Pretty much from the jar threads up is what you need. See, like that one I got over full. So then I need my little ladle here to fix that because I don't want it to be that full. Remedy that little problem. It's hard, I'm used to filling quarts because that's what I do mostly and it takes a bunch of scoops to do that and much less to fill a pint jar. Oh, this stuff smells wonderful. I don't know why I've never seen a, a candle or something scented salsa making day because I think that would be a beautiful scent for a house. Okay, I'll call that good. And now, especially with this one I ladled out of, you can see how I do have stuff for sure slopped on that rim. So I'm going to make sure that's really nice and clean because we want all these to seal. And again, if one or so doesn't seal, which I get one or so of those every year out of several hundred jars usually, and I don't, I don't know why, some kind of little imperfection. Man, that's hot. Come on. Need my little fork out here for fetching these out of here. Um, we just put that one in the fridge and eat it first, which is fine. We're actually going to have some chicken tacos for a meal later today with some of this fresh salsa. So that is jars number 8 through 14 going in the canner. Water right up to the grate. Arranging our jars around here as evenly as we can. Lid back on and once steam starts to come out the hole, we'll start the timer. Okie doke, our timer just went off for both these canners. Once again, for sure, if you're opening anything that's full of steam, like that is, open it away from you. A bad steam burn all over your neck and chest and arms is no joke. And once again, with steam bath canning, just like water bath, I don't need to wait for it to cool off or anything. But I'm going to set the jars over here on my table. It's still got, I already heard one seal right there that's got a towel on it so we're not creating any temperature shocks between the the temperature that they're at now and here where they can you know cool down slowly there's a second pop off oh, the camera's picking those up that's just such a satisfying sound because that's the sound of you're done done sealed safe to store for a very long time and look at just how beautiful and pretty those jars are I've already got, while these were running, I've got my next batch ready to put in, you know, filled and the lids on. There's a third pop. And you have to be a little more careful with these pint jars. They don't sit quite as steady as the quartz do, but if you're just a single person or you don't have as big an appetite as Clay and I do or whatever, you might end up doing a lot more pint jars that might make sense for you rather than doing quart jars like I do of a lot of things. But we eat a lot of quarts. Now the only thing I have to remember to do before I fire these back up is to top off the water 
um, because I don't want either canner to, I'd probably get two rounds out of this before it all evaporated away, but I don't want it to evaporate away. So I've got this pot with boiled water, so it's fairly hot. And I'm just making sure they're back up so level with the um, top of the... See what I mean about... What would you ever turn this burner up on high for? It, uh, it puts out a lot of heat on the lowest setting I can get it on. Oh, no chickens in the canning kitchen shoe. Yeah, go away, Goldilocks. And we're going to load our next batch in here, and when they start to steam, we'll start that timer. So that is all there is to... You, of course, you could make this salsa and not can it. Um, but this is all there is to making and canning enough salsa to last us hopefully at least a year. I don't ever mind having a little extra that goes into having some the second year or being able to give it to somebody as a gift or share with friends when they come over, all that good stuff. Lids back on. Wait to see steam again. And once again the next morning, these are all cooled down, not disturbed since they came out of the canner. Seems like everyone has sealed. So I'm going to take the rings off, wash them, and use them for the next thing. And uh, no kitties in the canning kitchen, excuse me, not on the table. Um, and, uh, you know, wipe off any stickiness that's on the outside of the jars. Get these in the pantry. This came out to being 44 pints of salsa. Um, and if I didn't mention the canning time on that, uh, for me is about 20 minutes. If you're at sea level, you might do just 15 uh, minutes. But anyway, um, 44 pints of salsa, two pints worth or a quart worth of which we ate yesterday. Some with our grilled chicken and grilled zucchini spears for lunch and some with chips and fish for dinner. Anyway. Um, I love the flavor that this came out, and once again, this is what's so lovely about making your own. You can make it chunkier or smoother, spicier or milder, just anything you want. And going and buying something from a grocery store, I find just really hard to compare to, uh, you know, being able to get exactly what you want that way. So, that is making and canning salsa for the year. We hope you enjoyed it. Come back next time for more adventures. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.